Welcome to this brief discussion of the IS relationship. Uh, this is a follow-up video of a previous one about the algebra of the IS relationship where we derived an IS equation. So following up on that, today we're going to focus on the geometry of the IS relationship. Specifically, we're going to then uh, basically trace out our first IS curve. And then whenever we draw a curve in economics, you know what's coming next. We're going to think about, you know, what would cause this curve to shift? What might make it shift up? What might make it shift down? Um, and of course, eventually that'll lead to some comparative statics. So as a brief reminder, IS stands for investment saving. So this is basically about the loanable funds market, something we studied much earlier in the course, where we traced out a savings curve and an investment curve, and they had an intersection that determined the real interest rate. Um, we're focusing on that same type of diagram, that's our building block, but now we're thinking about if we had different levels of income, why, how would that lead to different levels of interest rates, and what would be basically the relationship then between R and Y. Uh, plotting that relationship of R against Y is going to give us our IS curve. So let's go ahead and think about that. Let's plot our first IS curve. So what we're going to do is on the left we have, as we said, loanable funds. That's our starting point. That's our building block. We could uh, go ahead as a starting point and draw in some level of saving here, and we'll draw in some investment. And we can see that they intersect at point A. So that's the equilibrium real interest rate. And that's basically the only way we use this loanable funds diagram in the past. But what we want to do now is think about what implications do these loanable funds equilibria have for the relationship between, on the right-hand side here, R plotted against Y. And the relationship that we trace out if we plot a couple points is going to be our IS curve. So our goal is basically we want to get you know, a point A, B, and C on the right, and then we'll connect the dots and see that they slope down, the IS curve slopes down. That's a conclusion we already had from having the IS equation, just looking at it, we saw the slope is negative. But it's nice to be able to see that with the geometry too. So the thought process is this savings here that I've drawn in really represents saving at a specific level of income. We'll call it uh, Y1. Maybe this is $1,000. So the, the total GDP in this tiny economy is $1,000. And at that level of income, people save a certain amount. You can see the savings quite low, but then again, the GDP was quite low, so maybe that you know that that sort of makes sense, and we and that led us to an equilibrium of point A. So what we'll do on the right here is say, okay, well at income level Y1, we had this associated interest rate; it was quite high, so we could plot that point, and that would be our point A. And now we want to say, well, what if income increased? What if income was Y2? And then we'll do it again. What if income increased again and was Y3? What would change on the left diagram in loanable funds? And then what would be the implications for the plots we'll point on, uh, points we'll plot on the right? Well, if your income increased from Y1 to Y2, this is the income of the economy as a whole, but I think the intuition for what you would do if your income increased carries over. So if your income increased from Y1 to Y2, would you save more or save less? And that'll tell us whether to shift S left or right. So pause the video, think about that. I think most of us on reflection would say, as our income increased, we're, we're definitely going to save more. I mean, it's not like as you get richer, you become poor or deeper in debt. You should be able to pay off those debts, save up some money, you know, where you, you, life is good. Your income is high. So if income was Y1, we'd have some new savings here. And we'll label that S with income level Y2. You can see we get a new equilibrium point B. And that equilibrium point involves a lower interest rate. So if we plot point B on the right-hand side, the right graph now, it'll be at point at Y1, we'll have a lower interest rate B. So we get something like this. And that's really enough to say, okay, well, now we can connect those dots and say, this is our IS curve, right? Sort of downward sloping looks sort of like that. But we might want to just continue the logic one more time just to convince ourselves that this is really right, that the IS curve is sloping down. So we imagine our income increasing from Y2 to Y3. And once again, as our income once again increases, we're going to increase our saving. So saving shifts again. We draw it in maybe like this. We'll label that saving with income level Y3. We get a new equilibrium, which is an even lower interest rate. And if we plotted that point on the right, it would be somewhere like here, point C. So we can, con can continue connecting the dots and we see that our IS curve, you know, basically it, it looks like a downward sloping line. You might say, wow, that line isn't very straight. That's just because my hand shakes. 
um, supposed to be a straight line, but more generally the IS curve doesn't have to be a straight line. It could be any kind of more complex downward sloping curve. The important thing is that we can see there, there's a definite negative relationship between R and Y, um, which is exactly what we concluded with the IS equation. So it's good that our algebra matches up with our geometry. Um, there's one last note I put here at the bottom, and this I think can help you to think about IS. One way to think about the IS curve is that it traces out a bunch of different equilibrium points, right? Because what we plotted here, A, B, and C, represent the three equilibria on the left, now plotted all together on one diagram on the right, and when we connected those dots, we were saying, well, there could have been a whole bunch of other equilibrium points for different levels of income that we didn't plot. So besides Y1, 2, and 3, we might have y1.5 and 2.5 and 4 and so on, those would all give us points too. So the IS curve is connecting the dots if we plotted out all the possible points for all the possible levels of income. All right, so this is interesting enough. It's good to be able to derive an IS curve, but what we really like to do, what we always like to do with graphs is to think about how would the curve shift? Uh, how would the curve shift and what would be the comparative statics? So we'll get started thinking about shifts. We'll have to save the comparative statics for later when we get an I, uh, LM curve up on this diagram. So we'll draw that in. We're going to shift uh, S here to the left a little bit. We'll draw in the new S prime. We'll label the new equilibrium point B so we can see that S shifted to the left and R went up. So that's our second step. The second step asks us, now that we've figured out what happens in loanable funds, is this causing interest rates to go up or down? Well, up. And that really tells you what happens to IS. Now we've figured out how that IS should shift and how it should shift because the IS curve represents a collection of points relating R to Y. So our initial IS curve might have looked like the one I'm drawing in now. And our conclusion was that as G went up, it's going to lead to higher interest rates for any given level of income, which means the IS curve should be vertically shifted up to have higher interest rates for any level of Y. And that looks like, you know, kind of like a terrible, not particularly straight line. But once again, it's not an art class. The important conclusion is that it, you know, looks shifted up. So that was one example of figuring out uh, an IS shift. There's lots of other examples we could do, and you should, you know, work through, through these at home. There's plenty of practice questions in the book. You could think about what if firms wanted to invest more? That would shift the investment curve, so that would have effects on interest rates and shift to the IS curve. You could think what if consumers wanted to save more for retirement? What if the government changed taxes? That would change public saving too. Um, so there's a lot of different scenarios, and you should be comfortable thinking about anything that when we studied this loanable funds was going to shift one of the two curves is now going to come back to be relevant because it'll change interest rates and cause us to shift the IS curve. So thanks for watching. Uh, now we're going to turn in, in the next discussion to thinking about the LM relationship.